last time I proved a central result namely Schur's lemma I just remind you which was this okay, given two irreducible representations of a group G which I denoted by gamma A say by matrices or linear operators let me use the same notation as here I think A or G and gamma B B or G okay. if uh, so, this is on some vector space V A and this is on some vector space V B. If S from V A to B B is a linear operator such that S uh, a this way, G, this one is equal to B G S. So, first you act with A, then pass to the second vector space, or you do it in the second reverse order. So, S is what they call an entertaining the two representations, okay. or I saw you in the other talk, S is an equal, people also say. S is an equivariant map, it is the same idea. Then either S is 0 or okay, S is invertible and BG is SAG, S inverse or gamma A and gamma B are equivalent. Okay. So, this is the first statement okay. either it is invertible or okay. the second statement is if okay, say let us say T V A to V A is such that it commutes okay. the image and the range are the same in this case then the theorem says T is a multiple of identity. Okay. Of course, it is for a multiple of identity this equation is true the theorem says that this is the only possibility okay. by the way this result has some other consequence I will just mention it if you are uh, yeah it comes if you at some point if you start dealing with matrix models of quantum field theory then you will come across some this result Burnside's theorem Burnside. Just let me say this. Okay. If okay, in this case, okay, gamma A is an n-dimensional representation, okay. then. Any n cross n matrix can be written as so. I have told them that you have kindly said that if there are people who have questions, they can approach me or you. Sure, thanks. Any 
n cross n matrix can be written as m m equal to some coefficients c g a g. I am assuming I am using the discrete notation in the continuous case you may have some integrations on the group, but this what this says is that the the the, the linear combinations of these irreducible matrices coming from the group give you all matrices okay, it gives you the full matrix algebra okay. uh, this is a rather a serious result okay. uh, but they are they are you can see somehow related okay. the this Bernstein theorem is related to this Schur theorem also okay. now I want to tell you a few things I, I told you that a simple consequence of this result that every irreducible representation of an abelian group is one dimensional okay. abelian group means the group elements commute we saw last time that that means that every irreducible representation of an abelian group is one dimensional okay. it might have higher dimensional representations but they would not be irreducible okay. for example translations on a line the only representation you get are by basically by plane waves okay, or some uh, distortion of the uh, plane waves or decaying waves or increasing waves. Okay. But there are one two dimensional representation we saw that okay, by upper triangular matrices. So, once you impose irreducibility this result follows. So, we want to look at operations with representations. and with groups so okay one okay a gamma is a representation let us say by matrices d g okay. then okay. this equation d a g 1 d a g 2 gives you d a g 1 g 2 which implies okay, d star the complex conjugate let us say d bar of g 1 d bar of g 2 is equal to d bar of g 1 g 2 okay. so this is a complex conjugate representation let me call it gamma bar say representation okay. there is no guarantee that gamma and gamma bar are equivalent okay. gamma and gamma bar may or may not be I will give you example right away equivalent one thing you should notice is I am using complex conjugation on linear operators it is not Hermitian conjugation so it is it is basis this activity is basis dependent okay. there is I do not unless you have some further structure on the group on the representation complex conjugation is not possible to define okay. Hermitian conjugation can be defined for the scalar product not complex conjugation unless you introduce something like a complex structure which I am not doing okay. 
So, if you take matrices, you take just take matrix complex conjugation, and uh, one can show that if you change the basis, this representation will undergo a similarity transformation. Okay. But that is enough for us. Now, let me give you an example. One for SU two. I will tell the answer later we will derive the answer okay. the irreducible representations are given by angular momentum j so their representation is gamma j okay. and if you use if you are familiar with this notation they are given by the beginner 2 by j plus 1 by these matrices where g is in su2 these are beginner these are rotation matrices if you do not know it we will do it later And j takes values what 0, half, I set h bar equal to 1, okay. free j again. Now, here one can prove that gamma j bar is equivalent to gamma j. For all j. That is a complex conjugate representation is equal to the original representation for angular for AC rotations, including. Okay. There is something funny, I just say it in practice, so in passing by mouth. If J were integral, you can actually make these representations real matrices. You can make, make these matrices real if, if J is integral. So, they are like actual physical rotations, but if j is half integral, you can never make ac the matrices actually real, but if you take a complex conjugate, you can conjugate it back to the original one, but you will not be able to, what happens is these are equivalent, but the, the matrix will generate the equivalence. Okay. So, what happens is this matrix is dj or g bar is some matrix d j of g c inverse the c is known but this c but depends on j okay. and c j squared happens to be minus 1 to the power of 2 j it is what they call charge conjugation matrix you can never diagonalize it square is minus 1 not plus 1 so, you can easily check that you cannot uh, choose because of this fact you can never choose this C so that this bar goes away. Okay. This is a funny property and it, uh, it is of consequence when people discuss things like time reversal. But for SU3, okay, the 3 and 3 bar IRIs are not equivalent. Some so it is a representation dependent statement. Certain representations they are equivalent, certain representations they are not equivalent. For this matrix, let me say. Uh, let me call it uh, let me call it z okay which is the root of unity it, this is belonging to su3 it is unitary and determinant is 1 
इसे रूट क्यूब रूट यूनिटी नाउ इफ आई टेक द कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जिकेट ऑफ दिस सिंस एक्सपेनेशन माइनस आई टू पाई ओवर थ्री is not equal to exponential plus i 2 pi over 3 right z bar and z z have different eigen values okay have different spectra the eigen values have changed so uh, there is no way of finding okay so there does not exist s such that s z s inverse z bar that proves the result right if there were a similarity transformation from here to here for su3 not j gamma and gamma bar for su3 3 and 3 bar for su3 there will exist an s a linear operator in the three dimensional space which will take the this element to its representative in the three bar which is z bar z bar but there is no such thing okay so the two representations are inequivalent right so you should think of the z as the uh, image of an abstract element in su3 that element is represented by this in the 3 by 3 representation 3 and is complex conjugate in 3 bar and equivalence means that there is a similarity of transformation between them but there is no such thing okay so the two representations are inequivalent okay so given any representation you can look at the complex conjugate representation okay so let me go on okay the contra gradient representation here what we do is we take d o g1 d o g2 is d o g1 g2 so i now take let me take the inverse of this so get uh, d o g2 inverse d o g1 inverse is equal to d of uh, well d a g1 g2 inverse right so let me take a trans transpose of this matrix okay so t is transpose so i can take transpose of this get d transpose g1 inverse d transpose g2 inverse is equal to d transpose of g1 g2 inverse okay so you see from here that g going to d transpose g inverse is a representation is a contra gradient representation since i have taken a transpose again <coughs> it is not defined on a hilbert space intrinsically okay. uh, but if you do a differential geometry upstairs vectors and uh, vectors and covectors okay that uses this contra gradient the representation whereby uh, what they call covariant vectors and contra gradient vectors transform 
or contract gradient to each other. Okay, but they are working in the reals. Here we are working in the complex things. So transpose here is not intrinsically defined without further structure. But anyway, in physics we use it all the time. Choose some basis and define it, and you will not go wrong because if you change the basis, this thing will undergo a transformation. Okay, similarity transformation. Then you can also do one more thing, okay. uh, which I can call, I do not know what to call it. We have one more representation, which we can manufacture, where I take G going to D transpose G inverse, I take complex conjugate bar. This is also a representation. I do not know what to call it. Call it, let us say, okay, uh, let us say gamma transpose bar. So, the contract gradient, let me call it gamma t. It is really the dual representation in the reals. Okay. But anyway, we have these four things. Okay. But if you have a unitary representation, if, if, if gamma is a unitary representation, then they, these things sort of collapse because you can see that gamma transpose these matrices you have this thing no so here uh, the matrix element dg yeah unitary means start the complex conjugate and transpose is dot dog okay is some unitary is not right Com uh, complex is this Hermitian conjugation is inverse. So, D or G inverse. So, from here you see that this then if I transpose it again, okay, gamma this gamma T, I want to end bar, okay. What will happen is? it will be origin equivalent to gamma right the last one will be equivalent to the original one right because i can transpose here and put the bar and get back the original one and the middle two are the same that is gamma bar is equivalent to gamma transpose so in that case you are left with only two different ones out of the four namely the complex conjugate one and the original one for example this typically happens for all the cases we encountered for example SU3 has in the same dimension you have two irreducible representations in general 3 and 3 bar 6 and 6 bar um, similar things happen with other groups also okay. SU5 similar things happen okay. These are uh, groups which come in standard model, I mean quantum uh, particle physics models quite routinely. Okay. So, these are some activities you can do to create representations, but uh, uh, you should also remember about direct product of representations. If we know we have done this in the class, okay. if gamma A B okay, call them two representations okay. D A B G are representations.
on two vector spaces V A V B. We saw that uh, the 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 uh, tensor product representation. which we may call as gamma A cross gamma B acts on v, v A say cross V B in V A cross V B by uh, D A G cross D B G on V A cross V B is X by slots is D A G V A cross D B G V B. Hmm? This is a new representation, we have seen this. I okay. will state a problem which is very important for, uh, for example, in angular momentum theory, it is called the Klebsch Gordon problem, which was, I think, Rock, people like the names associated with that being Wigner and Raka. And Raka, well, I will tell what it is, but do you know what is the trace of this representation? What is the trace? This is an important thing. Trace of this representation, what is this? Can you guess? <coughs> this is going to play an important role. The trace of the product direct product matrices is what? In terms of the D original each individual factor. No, no. It is simply what? Okay. I claim it is D A G times trace D B G. Why? For I can do it explicitly. For choose a basis, okay. say uh, E A I in V A and V B here. Okay. Then D A G cross D B G acting on E A E I A cross E J B. Let me write down the matrix of this linear operator. Okay. By definition, this is going to act here. So this will have some, some this, this is going to act here. So it will be the matrix of D. Okay, I don't know what to call it. Um, it will be called it some E I prime A times this acting here. Let me call it D tilde A G I prime A I. And this is going to act here. So it is going to be E B. G prime times D tilde B G G prime G right. But by definition this is equal to E I prime A cross E B J prime 
of the matrix of the product okay uh, is some matrix of the product uh, d a g cross d b g let me put it like this i prime j prime i j hmm? because this basis matrix base is labeled by two elements so i have two elements here and two elements here so you can com compare this with this so you see that this is equal to d tilde a g i prime i d tilde b g j prime j. So you take a trace, take, taking a trace means set this equal to this in sum. So I put i prime equal to j prime i equal to j in sum. So you get the answer immediately. Right? So, okay. with i prime equal to i, j prime equal to j, gives answer. You'll see this answer, result turning up later when we discuss characters. That the characters are just. Uh, the character for these are the these traces are called characters you have some very special properties okay? and the characters are multiplying when you take direct products of representations okay? now I should stay say before I go further <coughs> what we may call the physicist is called the Klebsch-Gordon problem What we here given two let us say irreducible representations gamma a b of a group g for us the problem consists of two parts okay. a right the tensor product of the two representations as a direct sum gamma c irreducible. Okay. Write the direct product as direct sum. Assuming that you can completely reduce it, it should be the case in most many of the groups we deal with. Okay. It may be that you cannot do the full reduction, like uh, it happened with translations. But for the kind of groups where this problem arises, this can be done. Okay. Sometimes people write this in a different way. Okay. Uh, can write. I will give you an example with rotations gamma A cross gamma B as some N A B C gamma C okay. the notation upstairs downstairs I should have written this like this huh? okay. where okay. N C A B are integers positive? I'll explain to you. RHS sum is direct sum. Okay. C is summed over, but direct sum. I should have written plus. This is not and and 
when if you happen to get n times gamma c means gamma c plus gamma c n times hmm. sometimes uh, the same representation will occur more than once okay. then if it occurs twice you call it 1 plus 1 is 2 in the train okay. this way writing this n a b c in this way writing are called fusion coefficients because you are fusing two uh, elementary systems and how many what is the output this uh, kind of expansion comes in quantum field theory for example if you discuss conformal field theories you will see this expression many times okay. now for SU2 let me give you second uh, part of the problem for us is the following B find a basis find an orthonormal basis okay. uh, I should say something else okay. if this is a reduction is a corresponding reduction of vector spaces so gamma a is acting on va and gamma b is acting on vc vb now I am going to find gamma c okay, which are invariant subspaces I mean and vc are invariant subspaces in here for gamma c. Okay. So you should be able to rewrite this as a direct sum we will be able to rewrite it as a direct sum. So the problem is the challenge is find orthonormal basis. for gamma c for uh, this this should be called v prime c okay. this is not this this thing some v, v some v c okay. for v prime c in terms of those of v a b. this problem seems turns out to be highly non trivial okay, in general and it is uh, very important for computational for actual practical use. So let me show you okay, how it works example SU2 okay. I told you about the representation gamma j. we know that this uh, part a will be gamma j 1 cross gamma j 2 we know the answer if I add angular moment at j 1 and j 2 what are the angular moment I get you know it no from minimum atomic theory you know yeah what is it yeah you got it is simply the direct sum of modulus at j 1 minus j 2 to j1 plus j2 right of gamma j and each representation occurs only once for su3 this is not true okay. if you look in uh, uh, there is a famous example of if you take the adjoints 8 dimensional representation of su3 
and you take its reciprocity with itself. It occurs twice. It itself occurs twice. So, it, so this is a uh, two is called simply reducible. In the sense that this is occur only once. Then. Okay. Say again. I mean, can we take direct sum of vector space with itself? Yeah, sure. Direct sum of the vector space with itself. Yes, you will get simply double doubling of the vector space. Yes. If you take C1 one dimensional vector space with itself, you get two dimensional vector space. You will put them in a column, that is all. Okay. So, B. Okay. Say gamma j one gamma j acts on let me call it Vji with orthonormal basis say j one j one m one is m one going from minus j1 minus j1 plus 1 up to plus j1 right and likewise j2 m2 so these are canonical basis in quantum field quantum mechanics okay corresponding to angular momentum j and third component of angular momentum m we will derive their properties later including how uh, how group action completely we will find the full group action it is not difficult these are orthonormal ok the gamma j on right acts or let me call it v j prime with orthonormal basis which is normally written as j1 j2 j m1 m2 m these labels are telling you where they come from their progeny they are coming from taking the tensor product okay. but when acting here with gamma j it will only act on j in a canonical way this object here can be rewritten in terms of the original things okay. it is some uh, things like this 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 thing here is some c j1 j2 j m1 m2 m multiplying j1 m1 times j2 m2 where the summation is over this repeat indices okay. you know what this is these are the Krebs coordinate coefficients They are completely known for SU2 and for SU3 also I believe um, they are probably known, they are table, there are tables. For higher groups I think there is a, maybe a scheme, but I do not know of explicit expressions. The, it is very interesting to check how these things behave, asymptotic behavior of this in angular momentum. Huh? Uh, so you s try to understand how what happens to them when j becomes very large and j1 j2 all of them become large then you get classical addition of angular momenta there is some classical formula and this is originally worked out by Regge. Regge. so the asymptotic behavior of this was originally worked out by Regge. and they have suddenly turned up in 
what they call loop quantum gravity where in spin networks so there is a model for discretizing space time so that you can do uh, and to define quantum gravity non perturbatively okay where each uh, vertex so they have some they are doing some network okay. in whole space time then what happens is at each network you have three angular momenta and you attach you have a rule to put the whole thing together and when you have a picture like this here what you attach is this Krebskoid equation j1 j2 j m1 m2 m3 m2 m3 m then there is a way of putting them together so that uh, as suppose the whole thing closes you will get a particular expression which is regarded as uh, a partition function for a quantum gravity model. Okay. So, this is very common people doing spin networks on uh, spin networks for quantum gravity use it quite routinely okay. these days loop quantum gravity people Abhay Ashtekar and co okay. you see many many papers on this in the literature. Okay. So, it is originating here and the properties of this Klebsch-Cotton coefficient for large values of angular momentum okay. when you get some kind of a classical expression the original proposal along these lines is due to Penrose. I do not know what he what led him to this that I do not know because for some reason this Klebsch-Cotton coefficients have something to do with the Riemann tensor which I do not know how um, somewhere discretizing exists so that some defect angle turns up as a Riemann tensor of that particular triangulation but I do not know this stuff ok. okay. Now, there is something you should know which, which is which is can be a source of confusion there is something called tensor product of, uh, product of groups okay. direct product of groups g h this is a group ok. So, g cross h whose elements are g h so it is a Cartesian product just a pair it is a group with okay, g 1 h 1 g 2 h 2 is g 1 g 2 h 1 h 2 ok. Here if say uh, d g d h are representations of g h then this mapping can give gives a representation of g cross h that is obvious okay. but here is a warning this may not be faithful but this representation may not be faithful let me give an example example g equal g and h are g h are s u 2 spin half ok. 
so let me choose dgh okay as let me choose them to be two cross two representations okay so what i am doing is okay so then above is g comma h goes into g tensor h okay where we regard g h as 2 cross 2 for simplicity so this is a 2 by 2 matrix 2 by 2 matrix i am sending them to the directory it is a representation it is not faithful what do you mean by faithful it is not a bijective there are there is a kernel in this mapping what is your kernel that is there are several elements which go into the same element which are they elements which are distinguished here are not distinguished here what, can you tell me what they are you should be but but the uh, but uh, since okay 1 1 goes to right 1 1 goes into 1 1 okay and minus 1 minus 1 goes into again right minus 1 cross minus 1 but that is 1 1 but this is tensor product this is Cartesian product they, so these are the same right so the, this there is a kernel okay physically it is that it's not a mathematical curiosity because this is the existence of this kernel means that if i put two spin half particles together i get integral spin particles that's the kind of thing that you are getting right the center minus 1 corresponds to a 2 pi rotation but the two 2 pi rotations are merging into a 1 plus 1 2 pi rotation doesn't give minus sign if you rotate both sides by 2 pi you don't get a minus sign okay. so the just a physical meaning in terms of angular momentum in terms of for example statistics of the particles change so this has some conse consequences i mean you will find this example will come back later and because of this cancellation of signs in tensor products or factors in tensor products you will find that uh, there are cases where of groups which we will discuss later this has no faithful irreducible representation but it has non faithful reducible it has no faithful irreducible representation but there are faithful reducible representations okay but if you try to take them apart some centers will be some elements will get identified okay and again we can interpret what is happening now just as a final thing today okay which is quite curious okay, but we will come to this importance of this later suppose a is an associative algebra that means i will not formally define it it's just uh, so it's like linear operators okay so you can take products and it is associative say so vector space with a product defined and suppose if okay rho okay a to rho a is a representation of a we found I can even write uh, 
Yeah, it's okay. For algebra, see, this is not true. Okay, say rho i. Let's make two of them. Let me take. It is not true that rho one cross rho two is not in general. A representation of a it is unlike the group. The reason is okay, take row one, the linear is the problem is a linearity. Okay? If A goes to rho A, B goes to rho A B, right? If it is a representation, we want rho 1 cross rho 2 on A plus B. Okay? If it were a representation, rho A I am telling it is linear in each factor. The question is, is this equal to rho 1 a plus b cross rho 2 a plus b. Answer is no, okay. if because we are defining if I in the case left hand side by definition is uh, I am making some mistake. That is not what I want. This is not what is this equal to rho 1 plus cross rho 2 on A plus rho 1 cross rho 2 on B. It has to be linear in the factors. The answer is no because this is rho 1 of a plus b cross rho 2 of a plus b. So, if you have a group, one of the most important property of a group of symmetries is you have elementary systems transforming with some symmetry, you can put them together and you can tell what is the symmetry of the co interacting composite system. For a generic algebra, you cannot do this. So, algebras cannot acquire as such as symmetries, but for half algebras, this is where the half algebra comes. Okay. There is a way to, we will come later. to compose representations. Let me just say that what I mean here, of course this is linear, okay. rho i of a plus b is equal to rho i a plus rho i b, right. It is a representation of an algebra. So, it has to be linear and it has to be rho a of a times b must be rho a of a plus times rho a of b. Okay. So, it is a representation of the algebra and I want to see if I can define the this, this thing on a plus b is still a representation and the answer is no. The reason is that if it were it will be linear in a and b. But you can work it out by this rule here. This is rho 1 of a plus b times rho 2 a plus b. That is not equal to the right hand side. Because there are cross terms. For example, rho 1 b times rho 2 a. Okay. And likewise, uh, so the group, the property will not of the representation of the algebra will be lost. Okay. So we cannot imagine conceive of using algebras as symmetries without further rules, without something hap new happening and so group has much more structure, okay. but it turns out that the so called half algebras which we shall deal with later somehow maintains all these essential ingredients. 
so they can be used as symmetries okay and that is their importance and why they are turning up for example in discussions of things like conformal field theories things and stuff here. Okay.